Today I'm going to be giving you my honest opinion on the KiwiCo Koala Crate for those of us living in the UK. Hi guys, I'm Cara and welcome or welcome back to my channel. As most of you know, I'm mum to 25 month old Ben and a few months ago for his second birthday, my mum gifted him a six month subscription to the Koala Crate at KiwiCo. I think it's a brilliant idea to give a subscription like this as a birthday present because it's almost like the gift that keeps on giving and he was super overwhelmed with so much on his birthday so this is a really really nice way for the presents to continue. Today I'm going to be giving you my honest opinion on those crates. We have now had three of them so I think that gives me a kind of overview of what the crates are about. I've also recently seen a lot of YouTubers that I follow talking about them and promoting them here in the UK. And I do think there's a little bit of a difference between those who receive them in the US and those that receive them here in the UK. So I'm going to be sharing my thoughts. I'm going to be going through all three of the crates and telling you what I love about them and what I don't love about them. So let's get started. Most recently, Ben received this colour mixing crate. They come in these little yellow crate boxes and each of them so far has come with a little activity explanation card, um, a Kale in the Koala book and all the resources that you need for several activities. In this box there's a coloured water mixing activity, a colour game and a watercolour picture activity. In this box I really did love the activities, I think there was great variation, so there was a kind of watercolour craft activity, there was also a little bit of a science experiment and then there was also a game about colours. The game I think was absolutely brilliant, it was totally at the level, the right level for Ben so we could definitely play it together. I think games and simple games are great at this age to introduce the ideas of turn taking and also is a really nice way to engage with your child one on one. My turn. Green! Oh, I already have a green. Your turn. I have a green. Oh, you want a green? Roll it and see if you get a green. <gasps> green! Green. What's green? Green. Mm. Mm. Turtle's green. Turtle's green. I also love that the resources that came with this could be used again and again, so for the colour mixing and the beakers, that's something that we can easily repeat just using food colourings in the future as well. I also think that the books that come with these sets, the Kel and the Koala books, are brilliant. Ben really enjoys reading them with me and I also love the characters that they've developed to go through the, cute, the koala crate. So they have Kel and the Koala with his little friends Peter the Parrot and Ella the Alligator. In general, I think one of the major downsides of this koala crate is that they're for ages two to four. Now, Ben's obviously just at the two-year-old side of that. Um, he is definitely hitting all of his milestones. He's very verbal, so he does still get something from the crates. But I think that two to four is such a wide developmental age range. Um, and it means that, I think, for example, the kind of colour mixing element of that, whether it was through the, the craft activity or through the beakers, is a little bit beyond him at the moment when he's just coming to grips with colours by themselves. I do think though that he does still take something away from the activities and does still enjoy them and I guess the great thing about them is that I'm keeping all of these kind of activity cards and the resources and it's something that we can repeat again in a few months time or even next year but he'll probably take a different learning outcome from it. Ben's second crate was an alphabet crate and it came with a book, some felt shapes and a little Kellen posting activity with these little food tokens. In general, I love the idea here of introducing the alphabet through the foods so that all the letters are kind of in one theme. And also Ben totally loves feeding these little tokens to Kelly and the Koala. What toddler doesn't love a posting activity? What did you feed him? Pumpkin. <laughs> Pumpkin. What are you going to feed him next? A, a kiwi. A kiwi? I think all the images of the food are really nice. I also think that the resources are really, really great quality. However, this is the box that I do have the most issues with. Firstly, I think that this is a pretty advanced topic, even for a three or four year old. I think it's something that is definitely pretty beyond Ben at the moment, but something that I do think we'll come back to and use maybe next year or the year after. So I guess I can, I can hold on to these resources for as long as I want. 
As I mentioned, it introduces the alphabet through foods. One of the problems that I have is that a lot of these foods are American English um, and it's not at all been adapted for the British market. So for example, um, of where we would say courgette, Z is zucchini in the, the little tokens. Similarly, F is fries, where we would say chips, and Y is yam, where we'd say sweet potato. So this is something that if I change it for Ben as we're going along, uh, the letters don't actually match up. Also, some of these are, I guess, a little bit far-fetched. I mean, I don't blame them. It's pretty hard to find a food that starts with a U or an X. But again, it's something that Ben's just not familiar with. So it's really hard to engage him with that letter and that piece of food when it comes to feeding Kellen the koala. I guess the biggest problem that I have with it is that it's not phonetic. So for example, the I is ice cream instead of a sound that starts with an F sound, which is definitely what I do when I'm introducing letters to Ben. I think it's really important to give him the letter sounds. Like for example, I've never taught Ben the ABC song because I don't necessarily at this stage see very much relevance in him knowing the names of the letters instead of the sounds of the letters because I think that's initially what he needs and able to be able to read. And um, also there's a, a big mix here in this activity of capital letters or uppercase letters and lowercase letters. For example, the felt shapes focus on the uppercase letters, on the tokens there's a lowercase and an uppercase letter. I just feel that there's there's a lot there um, as a, a kind of learning input too much in my opinion. And again, like I said, so overwhelming for a two-year-old, never mind a four-year-old. Guys, I am not a primary school teacher. I don't have a lot of knowledge in teaching children to read. Um, I am a foreign language teacher, but I generally think it's maybe just not the most thought out when it comes to the activities. The first box that Ben received was a doctor themed box and you may have seen this in our video of our 20 hour car journey to Germany. This box came with, again, a book, a little felt bag which had stickers which Ben decorated it with, a little doctor kit which had a stethoscope, an otoscope and a thermometer, and little plasters with Velcro, and a little doctor's checklist. This has by far been the biggest hit until now with Ben. He is a huge fan of pretend play, so this has been used to play doctors, to play vets, and I also think it's a great thing to play because it kind of lessens the mystery and the fear around going to the doctors. I also love the conversations that we've had around this box when we've been talking about feelings, things being sore. It's also been great for kind of reinforcing vocabulary related to body parts or illnesses. And also this is one that Ben can play with very independently. And the only dislike or problem I have with this box is that again, the book is very American English. So for example, plasters are referred to as bandages throughout the whole book, which I guess is fine. I just change it when I'm reading to Ben, but bandages for me are something white that a mummy is wrapped in and not something that you would stick over a cut. Plasters! This is a problem I do have throughout all the books, whether it's different words or different spellings or different pronunciation. For example, for the letter Z, I would say Z and not Z, so it doesn't rhyme with what they're doing throughout the book in the alphabet book, for example. It's not a big problem because I just change it as I'm going along, but I do think it's something they, they should consider now that they are selling into the UK market and promoting them here. Overall, I do think that the Koala Kates from KiwiCo are really good quality. I think that the resources that come with them are brilliant. I think the activities are super and they're also something that you can use again and again over time or keep back and use at a later date if it's something that you don't necessarily think is an age appropriate. Similarly, the price tag is around £15 for a box. Um, I think that that's reasonable. The price changes depending on how long you take a subscription over. So if you just buy one or two boxes, it's obviously more expensive than buying a full, full year um, of, of subscription. However, they then charge six to seven pounds postage on top of that per box, which I think does push it up to the slightly too expensive mark. Um, they obviously don't have any British distribution at the moment. They're coming, each box is individually coming from the US, which is why it's so expensive. 
Ben also gets super excited and starts shouting activities when he sees his Kiwi crate arrive, which is super cute. I'm actually still a little bit undecided if I'll continue these after the six months that Ben has been gifted. I guess I still have three months to, to go and to evaluate before I make that decision. Please let me know down in the comments if you've ever had a KiwiCo box and what you loved or didn't love about it as well. I'll also leave the link to the company's website in case you want to check out their crates. They do have crates for a whole range of ages and stages and something that I definitely will look into as Ben gets older as well. If you've enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up and if you'd like to see more toddler parenting content, please have a think about hitting the subscribe button. I hope you'll join me again soon. Bye! -bye.